Welcome to an RPG in a Box Basics video tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at the two movement modes that you get in RPG in a Box. You can choose either grid move mode or free movement mode. So we'll talk about the differences between the two and some things to know about uh, the pair of them. So, first of all, you can change um, the movement mode on a per map basis or you can have the whole game be one particular movement mode. So if we have our map open here, for example, this is my overworld map. And if you click the map properties panel, at the very top, it says movement system. And by default, it will say global default. Now, what's that? Where's that pointing at? What's that referring to? Well, if you open up the game configuration panel, you're going to want to click gameplay and you're going to want to click mechanics. And at the very top here, it says movement system and it's set to grid movement, but you can also change it to free movement. Okay. You can also uh, set the movement type. So relative to camera means that wherever the camera is facing, when you move, that's going to be where you're going to go. Tank controls is very much where you when you turn, you just turn on the spot and then it sort of disconnects the camera from the movement. It's kind of like a sort of, um, like those old sort of Resident Evil games where the camera would be static and then you would just turn and then go in the direction your character is now facing rather than moving in the direction that the camera is facing. Whereas relative to camera it means the camera is then connected to the player. And so as you turn, the camera will turn with you. So. I want to focus in this video just on the movement type. So although there's other things here, we'll, we'll cover those at another time. So the movement system can be changed, as I said earlier, between grid and free movement. And this setting here is a reference to that. So at the moment, because we've set this map to use the global default, this map is now a free movement map because the global default, uh, sorry, I didn't save it, is now free movement. Yeah, because this is global default and the global default is set to free movement therefore this map is free movement so if you wanted all of your maps to just all be one type of movement system you would set it up here as the global default and then you just make sure that every map which it is by default anyway unless you change it is set to the global default for the movement system and then every map will then be either free movement or grid move move depending on what you're trying to develop okay or you can override it by changing it from global default to either grid or move on a per map basis. So it is actually possible to have a game that starts in free movement and then when you load another map, it goes into a grid move mode. So you can mix and match them as well. Just for the purposes of the video, we'll just talk about this map on its own. So let's start with grid movement. So how does grid movement work? The way it works is you see these lines that are on the map. This is our navigation lines. And this tells your game not only where the NPCs uh, can move, but also where the player can move. And the player and the NPCs will move on a tile by tile basis. So the center of the tile, for example, here, you can see this white dot. If I zoom in a bit, you can see the white dot in the very center of this tile. And same for all the other tiles. The white dot is always typically the center of that tile. So you'll notice that when you place an NPC, it's always standing on that white dot, literally over that white dot. So if an NPC was to move from this tile to this one, it will move from one white dot to the other. It's impossible for the uh, goblin, in this case, to suddenly stand here when it moves forward or stand here when it moves forward. It's a tile movement doesn't work like that. It's going to snap to these white dots. So if the goblin is standing on this tile and then it moves to the next tile, it's going to move from this white dot and stop at that white dot. Okay. Just interrupting to make a quick correction for something I'm saying here. Um, because the player character and the goblin are both a 16 by 16 model and the grass tile is also a 16 by 16 size tile, uh, the position of the character model also is taken into consideration. So the reason why both the player and the goblin are actually standing on the white dot 
is because they're also in the center of their model in, in the volume that they're in when you open the voxel letter so they're also in the middle of that volume um, if you moved them you know further away from the center they'd also be further away from the dot in the map editor as well but what is important still to sort of mention is that the same thing still applies though when they move whether it's the player or the npcs they will snap to a 16 by 16 movement so they still can't make while they may not stop on the dot necessarily they still will make a, an entire 16 by 16 movement every time they move so understanding that will give you a bit more understanding of you know the placement of things in your game and how the movement works and that's the same for the player so if we save this map and go into the game for a second so here we are in the game and we can see the goblins moving around and you can see how they literally take quite big steps forward there's it's impossible for them to take like a very small step because they are essentially going from white dot to white dot every time they move and if i move the player character same thing again i can't just stop wherever i want to stop if i just tap the s key for example i will do a whole movement from one tile to another same with when i click if i click on this tile here i have to do the whole movement i can't just stop halfway through okay so Grid move is a movement is a, is a movement system where you are um, tied to the the actual grid of the map, so you move on that grid. Okay, free movement, however, disconnects the player from that grid. It will not disconnect the NPCs. The NPCs will still use that grid, but the player is no longer now tied to that grid. So if we change this map to free movement and save it, let's take a look at the difference. So if we just stand still for a moment and watch the NPCs, you can see they're moving exactly the same as they did in Grid, because they are still using the Grid. The NPCs right now have not been um, made to support free movement. It will eventually support free movement later down the line, but as of this video, and for the you know for the foreseeable future for the moment, uh, NPCs use the Grid move. Okay. However, if I now move the player. You see how my movements are much finer. If I tap the movement keys, I can actually hop. You know, I can just literally move in fragments. And I can also move diagonally, which you can't do on grid move. So if I hold both the W and the A key at the same time, I go diagonally top left. And D and E, I can go top. Uh, sorry, W and E. W and D, sorry. <laughs> I can go top right. Okay. And... S and A, I can go diagonally this way, and S and D, I can go diagonally this way, okay? So you can move diagonally in free movement mode, which you can't do in grid. Grid is literally left, right, up, down, and you are also moving from white dot to white dot, like these goblins. See how the goblins never move diagonally? They're always moving forward, back, or left and right, and they're always making big movements. So that's the difference between free movement move and grid movement mode is that you're tied to the grid in one mode which is the grid mode a uh, grid mode <laughs> and you can go forward back left and right but you can't go diagonally whereas free movement mode you are disconnected from that grid and you can move in more finer movements but you can also uh, move diagonally okay so it's up to you which uh, movement mode works for your game but understand that the npcs and the the other elements of your game other than the player will still use grid mode regardless of which mode you choose it's free movement is just for the player as of right now now i'm going to put i'm going to mention this in this video because it's it's where a lot of people uh get a bit stuck with free movement mode so i'm going to mention it as part of this video um with grid mode it's quite easy to add a tile on top of another tile let's just do this for now Okay, and if you're in grid mode, that will just work. So if we play the game, if I move around the tile I just added, I can walk around it. Again, using the grid mode, you can see I'm making um, automated movements. I'm going from white dot to white dot, and I can only go left and right and up and down. Now, if I move towards this tile, I will automatically go up it and stand on it. Because the green lines in the map editor have done that for me. If we go back to the map editor, you can see how the green lines have gone up and over the top 
of this tile. In grid mode, these lines will tell the player and the NPCs where they can and cannot walk. So because there's a green line going up the tile, that's how the player and the NPCs will therefore react to this tile. They will go up and down it. However, what happens if we put on free movement and we disconnect the player from the grid and also from these lines? Well, first of all, I can now go wherever I want, but you'll now notice I can't get up this tile. I'm, I'm stuck. It's almost like the player can't go up any higher than the floor they're on. So how do you resolve this issue? There's two ways. Well, you can see sometimes you can kind of glitch yourself up there if you approach it from a certain corner like that. But that's, but this is, um, remember, this is a one voxel high tile. So I will be able to climb this quite easily. But even so, when I approach it from this angle, I should be able to get up onto it because you can see how shallow it is. But we have an issue in free movement mode where because we're not using the lines anymore, we're getting stuck. So there's two ways to solve this problem. Okay. One way is to go to game configuration and go to physics in the gameplay section and make sure that jumping is enabled. Okay. Because now we can press the jump key, which is by default the space bar and you can jump up and it will use the collision to dictate where, where they can jump. So, because this is a really flat, shallow tile, it's very easy for the player to jump um, on top of it. But obviously, if the tile was taller than where the player could jump, they wouldn't be able to jump onto it. Okay? Another way, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to make it so the player has to always jump to go up things, especially something that shallow, is to edit the tile in the voxel editor and for free movement you're going to need to use custom collision so you're going to want to find the collision override setting you're going to want to add a custom collision and then add a shape and you're going to want to add a prism which is going to give you a sort of huge triangle type thing here and what you're going to want to do is you want to change the height so one because this is a one high voxel tile so that's going to bring the ramp down to a height where the peak is literally at the tile. And then you're going to want to uh, left to, you want to adjust the left to right. And the size of it as well. That's um, to one, like that. And you're going to want to create this sort of almost like a, almost like a Toblerone, if you know what a Toblerone is. You're going to want to kind of create a Toblerone type of shape. And you're going to want to put that at all sides of your tile. Okay. So this one, for example, I'll do one of them. Um, let's do minus eight for a moment. See if that's, yeah. So something like that, where, you, where you're lining that up on this edge. And then you're going to want to put one across this edge, one across this edge, and one across this edge. And what that will do is that, that will give the player a ramp to go up. So if we just adjust the left to right for a moment. So you see how now when the player hits this, it's going to be fun. It's going to start at the level they're on and then it's going to guide them up onto the um, tile. So now if you're going to use custom collision, the whole thing needs to have collision. Otherwise you'll fall through once you get up to the top because it'll think that this doesn't have any collision. So what you will also have to do is add another one, which is a cube, and then set the height to one. And then that will be the whole thing, right? But you're going to want to shrink it down so that, um, let me see if I can do this. Try eight for a moment. Okay, and then let's try 10, 15, try 14. Because we need, basically, we don't want this edge to be here because then the player's going to have the same problem. They're going to butt up against this collision. So you want this collision to lead them up to this one, if that makes sense. So you're going to want to have this one further in and then the edges are ramped up, okay? So it's going to take a bit of um, time to do this, but this is what you have to do for free movement if you want to go up something um, because um, the lines, you're not using the lines anymore. You're now using essentially collision, okay? So that's what free movement 
will do it. It will toggle off the lines and you're going to have to start using the collision a lot more. So you're going to have to actually uh, make your tiles in such a way that it it helps the player up and onto them. Okay. Another thing to note about the difference between free movement mode and grid is that if you're using a free movement map, you actually don't need these lines. We could, for example, delete all of the lines on this side, for example. And although the NPCs now can't get from one side to the other, because the player is not tied to these lines, the player will be able to move across this gap. So if we quickly play the game one more time, so if you watch the goblins, for example, this one, he's never going to be able to get from that side to this side because there's a gap. There's no navigation here for him to get across. But we can walk across because we're not tied to that navigation anymore. We can go wherever we want because the player has essentially been disconnected from those lines. Whereas the NPCs are still very much using those lines to guide them around the map. Okay, so that's essentially the fundamental difference between the two modes. Is grid mode you're tied to the lines and the lines dictate where you can and can't go whereas free movement disconnects the player from those lines giving you the ability to go wherever you want the downside is the complexity comes from the fact that because you're not using those lines now you need to do a bit more manual about your tiles now notice how i can easily go up this one that's because that's where the ramp is yeah i'm going up that invisible ramp okay but i didn't put the ramp on all sides so now i'm um i'm stuck on this side. Yeah. See how it's a lot easier to go up this one than it is to go up this one. And that's because I only did one side. Okay. You will want to do all four sides so that you can go up from any angle you approach it from. Or at least you'll want to put collision on the sides that the player could even get up from, if that makes sense. So if there was a wall on this side, then you wouldn't need to put the collision ramp on that side because a wall would be blocking it anyway. But yeah, those are just some things to bear in mind with the two modes, okay? And so there you go. So that's the two movement modes that you have in an RPG in a box. Grid mode and move and free movement mode. And you can either have the whole project be one, or you can have a per map basis. You can choose which one you want, okay? So there you go.